Something we don't get every Sunday, you know. Yes. That very calm, relaxing, nice live music. Thank you very much, Elena, for joining us here on Fresh Brew. And uh, Joshua and Herman, welcome. Thank you very Thank much you. for Thank being you. here. Thank you. Thanks and, for having uh, us. Adding that live music vibe to our show. Uh, talk to us about how you've been uh, mm -hmm. through this challenging time. Um, it's been challenging, you know, and even it was impossible to practice for today so you know we got here early to practice um, but yeah it's 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 been a tough time for musicians you know events are all cancelled and mm -hmm. we thrive off live events as well having you know the energy from the audience and even just to jam together and practice together and songwrite together is not really something that's doable over zoom mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah but you know and personally, for me, it's been a nice time to slow down and relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the song that you just sang is called Menu? 
Menor. Uh, mispronouncing it. <laughs> so it has an apostrophe at the end. Menor. 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 Yes. Okay, now I can okay. my Sabah accent come out. Adila. So this is actually your second song, right? You released another song last year. Um, and this is going to be in your new upcoming album. Yes, correct. Right. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about the journey um, in terms of you know creating the album because uh, it has the album been named yet? Uh, it's a work in progress name, mm -hmm. so we're not going to announce it just yet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we've, this is our second uh, single off the album that we've released. And we've kind of sporadically been going into the studio when it's possible, mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. not now and doing the lines with each other. Herman can Herman does the recording at home. Mm -hmm. uh, we send tracks across to each other by email. Wow. Yeah. The whole process is being disrupted, the song creation. It just takes a lot longer. Process. And I think for creative people, it's, you know, it's such a difference to create when you're together versus when you're yeah. sitting at home alone. Mm -hmm. so, like, so yeah. Let's get into that song, right? Because we were just like chilling. Mm -hmm. It's got a very chill vibe. But what is the song about? Mano, it's, um, it's a word in Kenya, and it's a feeling of longing for something or longing for someone. It's a bit um, nostalgic. There's no direct translation in English. So it's a song mm -hmm. um, we've been playing for about three years, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, it was arranged and recorded last year. Mm -hmm. And we just thought it was a great time to release it now because, I mean, Personally, I've not been able to go back to the kampong and let alone to Kuching when my parents are, so yeah. I really miss it. No, I, I, feel, I feel exactly what you're saying because I, I was so looking forward to go back to Chinese New Year, back to KK, and then, you know, now the travel ban is officially, we can't officially travel anymore. Um, so I actually want to know, you know, what has been the process for you in terms of writing a song? Because the album is also going to be featured in a docu-series, right? Yeah, Here in so RTM, just saying, y'all can watch it when it's out. <laughs> so the album, I mean, it's been five years, six, six, five or six years since um, uh, our EP was out, mm -hmm. uh, Flight. So it's been a long time coming for something else, for a new mm -hmm. album. And it's just been um, a long time collecting the resources to do mm -hmm. it. I think a lot of people don't realize how much it really costs to produce just one track. So yep. we're planning for eight tracks on the album. It's, it's supported by Dayak Cultural Foundation and KKMM. Mm -hmm. And through the KKMM project, um, it's going to be part of a docu-series uh, called Roads to Heritage. Mm -hmm. nice. yeah. so, so Josh, you've been uh, collaborating with Alena for the longest time. Mm -hmm. uh, how has your music evolved over time? Um, are you going to add any elements to it or oh, yeah. is it going to maintain that feel? Uh, when we started, we, the first EP, we wanted to keep it as close as possible to the... To the roots. Uh, to the roots. It was like a foundation, you know. So mm -hmm. when we did that six years ago, five years ago, something Five, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have grown a lot <laughs> since then, mm -hmm. and um, music has changed, and uh, we've been a bit more adventurous with how we write and more elements, like, more more things that are closer to us, you know, like because we all come from rock and metal and, and pop and <laughs> jazz. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it's so many different things, so we we want to. Be adventurous a bit, lah. You know, with yeah. this new one. It'd be interesting one. to see the sape with the metal in future. Right. <laughs> you can see it now. Okay, we're rock. You know, a little bit of an upbeat song. So actually, you know, Herman. You know, from the scene, he's a. Uh, the bass player. Whenever uh, I know any artists uh, in the scene, they will always get Herman to you know play and whatnot. So she talked a little bit about how you know you guys are recording everything separately now, right? Mm -hmm. So she's probably you have an inspiration one day. Um, they say, you know, hey, Herman, this is uh, what I think about. Uh, I want to write a song. Maybe this is a melody. So how are you um, processing everything? You know, what is, what is it like for you to write, you know, bass or write uh, the, your part in the, the, the song at home without having her immediately have a feedback? Because usually that's how I see musicians jam. You know, right, they get right. in the studio, they play a tune, and then another person will add, uh, another person will add, and then, you know, come up with the best sound. So now it's separate. Um, mm -hmm. How has that changed for you? <laughs> so um, I think for me, um, it's the process is kind of this. It's kind of the same, but it's different at the mm -hmm. same time. Um, why it's different is um, as opposed to meeting together in a room and trying to write a song together. Um, maybe Alena will record a demo of it first, mm -hmm. or um, Josh will record a demo, and then we'll send each other stuff. Send each other. 
um, audio files and stuff. And then um, um, the feedback part of it is still there. Mm -hmm. It's just um, because the whole process is online, the whole thing takes a little bit of time, I would mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's interesting, um, but it's still fun uh, because um, I think each of us are still allowed to just be creative with it yeah. as much as possible and and then um, you know we send it back to each other and we still give each other feedback and uh, yeah you know producer bucks orders at you and I'm always giving them like abstract ideas I'm like oh I want it to sound like it's in a big tree or something <laughs> I want people to feel like they're in a light breeze or something. And, yeah, and we were like, ah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you uh, make the sound, you know, whenever you feel like, okay, like you said, you know, uh, I want you guys, I want the audience to be in a big tree. I want the audience to maybe feel like waves, uh, feel like, you know, they're floating in, um, in the clouds or whatever. So how do you translate her thought process into a sound? Well, it has become, <laughs> there is a process now mm -hmm. because we know each other. We're very, you know, we're, we're close. So <laughs> you have to step out of the normal. Yep. Thing and just uh, just get to the heart of it, you know. Really, it's mm -hmm. like that. One day it was, hey, can we make people cry with this? <laughs> wow. so, can, but we have to cry first, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a funny process, but we have our thing going on. <laughs> so like right. uh, vibing off that, it's like when uh, when I recorded um, the vocals for Mano. Mm -hmm. Me and Josh had a conversation, you know, and we had a long, deep conversation. And like sometimes these kind of things help because you know we're getting to know each other on a deeper mm -hmm. level. And then when you put that into a song, you know, like you, I mean, for me, I can definitely feel it, you know. Mm -hmm. So one of the things uh, jo Josh suggested to me, he was like, you know what you should do? You should try um, singing, recording the vocals, singing this song, right? Mm -hmm turning off the lights, sitting in a little dark corner or something, you know, and thinking about home. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to try to do that. So I did that mm -hmm. and then uh, found myself crying <laughs> by the end of it, you know, so yeah. Kind wow. of an interesting process. Yeah. I, I think process, we can feel yeah. we can feel that that vibe, that, yep. that longing, right, yep. in that song. It's really beautiful. Um, how has uh, the music uh, sape in uh, in general actually translated to a wider audience now? And, and how do you see yourself uh, as an ambassador for that role? Well, sometimes I say I, you know, I can do what I do because there's an audience, and there's an audience because people want to listen to sape and sape music. So. You know, it's been very well received in many audiences um, in Malaysia, in Sarawak mm -hmm. also, and across the world. People just love the sound. Yeah. They always feel like very meditative and very calm when they hear it. Yeah. And what it becomes it like also. A, is sorry. it intuitive? Is, are there chords to the sape? It's not. It's not intuitive. I'd okay. say. Um, it's just. I mean, I don't know. If you play strings, do you find it intuitive? Some somewhat. There's a sense like. Yeah, um, but I've been learning for 20 years, so it's uh, there's still new songs that I, I want to learn, and they're quite difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's 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 not a very simple instrument, lah. Mm. Right, <laughs> it's more complicated than what it looks. It looks. Um, right. So before we go, actually, we want to touch a little bit about your uh, award. Congratulations! So you won the best <laughs> styling for music video in the Buenos Aires uh, Awards, right? Great, great. Um, just you know, share to our audience how you felt, and you know, if there's any people you want to thank. On yeah, behalf. of course. I mean, obviously, I want to thank the whole team. Uh, Josh produced that track as well in 2016, 2015, 2016. Um, um, learned it from my grand auntie. The the core of the song was learned from my grand auntie, the Poirai, in Barrio, in the village, and of course um, the whole production team. And gosh, this you know just for the styling alone, there was 20 people behind the styling. Wow. And I think nice. you know it's just such a it was it was such a huge team effort, and I really carefully chose the people that I worked with, um, and um, I was directed as well and start by my cousin Sarah our other cousin Sarah gosh there's too many people to thank right now. <laughs> right. congratulations <laughs> to, to you. you and your whole team mm -hmm. and uh, you know check her out on, on Instagram uh, for latest updates thank you so much Elena for being here thank on the you. program thank you Josh thank you Herman for coming thank in so yep. and we also want to thank you guys watching at home